It's Wednesday, August 7. Good afternoon. I'm Herman Green with your midday news. A special welcome if you're watching on onespotmedia.com. There are reports that the industrial action by immigration officers has escalated. The National Workers Union, NWU, which represents some of the employees, says immigration officers at the Passport, Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, the WARF, and the Ian Fleming International Airport in St. Mary have also been calling in sick. Some of the immigration officers assigned to the Norman Manley and Sangster International Airports started calling in sick last night. NWU General Secretary Granville Valentine says the protest has been sparked by the inequity in the payment of allowances and benefits to some immigration officers. A meeting which was scheduled at the Ministry of Labor this morning has been pushed back to 1 o'clock this afternoon. Mr. Valentine says PICA has been reneging on promises for over two years. Meanwhile, the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency says some passengers entering Jamaica should brace for delays due to the industrial action by immigration officers. The People's National Party says it will be seeking a court order to compel the Integrity Commission to act on the Delay Integrity Report of Prime Minister Andrew Holness. The threat of legal action was issued this morning, hinging on action from the Commission before a specific deadline. We have the details in this report. In a statement today, PNP President Dr. Peter Phillips says the continued delay in the release of the statutory declarations of Prime Minister Andrew Holness is totally unacceptable. Dr. Phillips maintains that it is in the national interest that the country's laws are upheld and national institutions are in compliance. He said, quote, the Prime Minister's failure to adhere to the law is a signal to the public that laws can be ignored with impunity if one holds high political office. I will not condone that, end quote. The PNP president said the continued delay gives the impression that the country's laws are made for only some, while others can flout them without consequence. He further contends that the issue was not about any challenge of Mr. Holness's rights to resources, but the need for public servants to conform to the requisite levels of accountability by adhering to laws enacted to engender accountability and integrity of the country's leaders. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. Meanwhile, as the battle of the Peters for leadership of the PNP continues, data have shown that the Peter Bunting campaign, Rise United, currently has an edge over the one PMP campaign of Dr. Peter Phillips. According to polls conducted by pollster Don Anderson between July 20 and August 2 on who would be the better leader for the PNP, there was a 39% favorability to Mr. Bunting, while it was 21% for Dr. Phillips. In the TVJ Don Anderson poll in March this year, it showed that the PNP was trailing behind the Jamaica Labour Party by 11 percentage points. However, due to the recent internal contest, that gap has been reduced to less than 5 percent. It was also revealed that of the persons polled, Mr. Bunting had a 36 percent chance of beating Mr. Holness in the upcoming elections against Dr. Phillips's 16 percent. The poll had a sample size of 750 with a margin of error of plus or minus 3.5 percent. The Kingston Public Hospital, KPH, has responded to comments made by the National Water Commission, NWC, regarding the recent water shortage at the health facility. NWC says the agency is not to be blamed, but KPH believes otherwise. The ongoing water shortage in the corporate area has been affecting procedures at the Kingston Public Hospital, KPH. As a result, surgeries have and continue to be cancelled. The hospital's administration is blaming the water shortage on the NWC's inconsistent delivery. But president of the NWC, Mark Barnett, says the commission is not to be blamed for the issue at the hospital. He explains that it's the responsibility of the hospital to notify the NWC when there is a water shortage. However, acting chief executive officer at the KPH, Colleen Wright, is insisting that the matter was reported to the NWC. We do have persons who are monitoring the intake. So when the water comes in to the basement, that is where it comes into, persons are there who monitor the intake. And as soon as we notice that the water coming in has reduced, what we do is we call water commission and we ask for water to be trucked. In other news, local pig farmers are slowly exiting the trade as they say the market for local pork has dwindled significantly. 
Speaking with TVJ News recently, President of the Jamaica Agricultural Society, JAS, Lenworth Fulton, said pig farmers have had to roll back on the rearing of pigs due to the dilemma which is being faced in the pork market. The problem that we are facing in this industry, knowing very well that it was self-sufficient, it was feeding all of us, and we didn't have to import um, pork except for pig's tail and the belly, the flanks to make um, bacon. So something has gone awry, and the farmers are saying it is a massive importation of pork, but the officials are saying they are not importing pork. So. It must be coming in the country because there's no shortage of the meat. Hence, Mr. Fulton is calling for an investigation to ascertain whether pork meat is entering the country illegally. He says the society will be writing to Agriculture Minister Audley Shaw for the matter to be addressed with urgency. And this is horrible. Um, one of the first, uh, the, along with the poultry industry, the pork industry is also listed as one of those that we are self-sufficient in. We still have the structures, we still have the farmers, but there's no pig due to poor market. And we now take a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back. Continuing the news. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is reiterating the view that the drought situation facing the country will not be solved overnight. He says he, however, recognizes that the dry conditions are making farmers' lives miserable and says the state will continue to provide financial assistance to truck water to affected communities. He addressed the situation at the Denby Agricultural Show on Tuesday. I'm not here today to appeal for patience. What I'm here to do is to ask our farmers, as the farmers in St. Elizabeth have done for decades, we must innovate to solve the problem. This is a problem that requires the integration of science and technology into our daily practices in order for us to continue to increase our agricultural output. So, Mr. President, it is important that the JAS becomes an advocate for the use of drip irrigation technology, for the use of mulching to develop more creative ways of storing and capturing rainwater. Now, opposition spokesman on agriculture, Dr. Fenton Ferguson, has conceded that both PNP and GLP administrations have failed residents of many sugar-dependent communities across the country. He made the concession while addressing stakeholders in the agriculture sector. History has shown us where the sugar factories close. Oftentimes, they become ghost towns. And oftentimes, the promises made in those transition have not been kept. And that goes across both administrations. And therefore, we have to look to see the value-added aspect of sugar if we are to continue. And we have to determine those communities that are seriously impacted New developments are coming to the Vernon Field Airdrome in Clarendon. Refurbishing initiatives that are expected to attract new business, boost the country's ability to provide the more domestic flights, and reap benefits for the island's farmers against predial larceny. We have the details in this report. The developments at the Vernon Field Aerodrome are set to improve domestic schedules, create a teaching institution for new pilots, and target predial larcenists. The improvements are to be implemented by international companies, that have already expressed interest in operating from the aerodrome. And we are exhibiting interested for on behalf of some interested companies that are prepared to locate at Vernon Field. One of them is a drone company, and the other relates to an aerospace college. So that we're moving into degrees of development and rehabilitating the runways at the moment. 
Minister without Portfolio in the Office of the Prime Minister, Mike Henry, added that the government is currently utilizing youth from the HOPE program to complete surveys for the work to be done on the airfield's runway. We're moving the pipes from the runway to be able to restore the 6,000 runway and then move forward with the development of the 14,000 runway as a future development. The international drone company expected to set up shop at the Vernon Field Aerodrome is Paragon into Space. Paragon Interspace aims to restructure several industries across the Caribbean, utilizing drone technology and other softwares. This includes the problem of predial larceny for farmers. Chief Visionary Officer for Paragon Interspace, Dwight Smith, provided some insight on how this will be done. So essentially we have drones that can be used for predial larceny for livestock, feedstock, and for crops in the terms of protecting your valuable assets. And then we have drones, some of these drones, by the way, and it's really important to bring up the fact that our drones can be as small as a brick or it can be as large as an SUV. And our larger drones, um, what you would use those for would be for cargo transport, heavy cargo, anything up to 1,200 pounds. We can carry that about 520 nautical miles. The drones will be used to identify and attack thieves and provide other software security measures such as drove hives for farmers. The company will be providing 300 jobs for Jamaicans over the next 12 months of operation at the Vernon Field Aerodrome. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. And here now is a preview of what's coming up in this evening's Health Report. In the next edition of the Health Report, we hear the story of a diabetic woman who was forced to do metabolic surgery because she was overweight. I'm diabetic, I'm hypertensive, um, high cholesterol, I had DVT, thrombosis, so all of those stuff. And I mean, I've tried every weight loss thing that I hear about out there, and it didn't work for me. And it, it gets scary for me when you have a teenage child who is depending on you. So that is what helped me to make up my mind to do the surgery. That's the health report this evening in Primetime News. And now for today's healthy living tip. To maintain a healthy body mass index, Cut out drinks that are high in sugar, such as sodas. Eat healthy by increasing your fruit and vegetable intake. Exercise and do regular checkups with your family doctor. We go on to news in sports. Jamaica's under-14 reggae girls will go in search of win number two when they take on the Dominican Republic Game 2 of the CFU Challenge Series at the Captain Horace Burrell Technical Center at UWI Mona at 4 o'clock today. The Jamaicans got the better of Martinique 3-2 on Monday, while the Dominican Republic scored the biggest win of the series so far, a 5-1 victory over Bermuda. This first game, we're going to approach the second game, right? And once again, if everything goes well and the fluidity comes into the game, then we'll be a better team, right? Be the same situation as we still want to win, right? But we want to improve as we play through the tournament. Now Bermuda will meet Martinique in the opening game at 2.30 this afternoon. And that's the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Please join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of our news, sports, and production teams, good afternoon.